Hi guys, my name is Sonia and today I'm going to walk with you through my new project which is called Bear City Beast. Bear City is kind of like, a, you know, a funny thing because bear means pretty girl and I'm living in Dublin which is a bay city, you know, so but I'm not bay today, my code is bay. So let's look at the code. Um, the goal of this was to wrap around the uh, the boost beast. So if you look at the example, the example in boost looks like this. It's a lot of code. It's one long string of code. And it's really hard to, like if I were to write a server, I probably would have a difficulty putting some code to, to handle my request because there's a lot of code. So, I wrapped it around with some classes and templates and concepts and magic. And I ended up with something like this. So you have to define just three classes on your own. And these three classes have to adhere to these concepts. So you are told what, what they need to have. So this is a concept of a loader of a cell certificate, a logger concept, and a server concept. And once you have these three classes, they're very simple, I promise you. Uh, this is a security, you, you load your SSL certificate. It just needs to load a content of a certificate, you know, file. It doesn't need to do anything more with it, just, just the text. Um, this will do the magic. So it will take this, okay? And will be later on, we'll be configuring your SSL context with this certificate and that's the magic. Um, so yeah, so that's my not magical class. And then we have a logger. Logger is a simple class that needs to have info and error. And it just accepts a very addict number of parameters where you just say what to log, what's the messages. So that's your that's your way. You need to define how you want your logging messages go into a log. And then you have your server. Server is the most important part here. So it's a basically a functor, uh, a functor that takes a, a request and that's it. So, so your server receives a request from the service and does something to the request and that's it. And the service itself is configured using the logger and the type of request uh, parser that you want to use and the, the server that you want to use, right? These are, this is a, there is two types here defined in this, in this mini framework. One is called dynamic request and the second one is called string request. String requests can be used if you're implementing like a tiny endpoint with uh, no big requests. Everything is just a short text request. Um, if you want to have file uploads, uh, then you need to use dynamic requests, right? So if you don't use, if your endpoint doesn't need to support file uploads, then you can use string requests. Let's look how I implemented those logger server, how, how simple this is. This is super simple. So here we go. The my server, as I said, it's a functor. So um well, it's a little bit more than that. So I pass here document root, uh, and that would be a folder where you could potentially uh, save a file if you were to handle post request a file upload. So you could just create an F stream and just write bytes as you receive them. Then you have this authenticate user function, but this is just this implementation thing. You see, I can just, I use it just here. It's not, it's not a part of the framework or anything like this. It's just a part of this implementation of this user implementation. So it is up to you how you implement my server. And then you have this operator and yay, no more templates. <laughs> Everything is, oh, no. We love OTA. So request concept, yeah, that's a constraint on auto, which we love a lot. And then we have the type, and then we have this perfect forwarded, you know, type, whatever that is. So yeah, I completely avoid here typing or telling what the reference is or whatever fits fits, you know, works with, with, with everything, <laughs> as long as it matches request concept. And then, you know, I have those defined in request concept that, you know, this 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 guy will have the method and target and it will have also this, this operator here. It also has send, success, 
response, bad requests, and a few other you know functions that you can use. So essentially, when we say something went wrong, uh, there is a send method in request, and then the the re response you need to produce response. So you can say bad request with the, the text could be a response, and and you just return, or you can say I want a string response, a text response. And that's a, that's a hello here, you know? So this is how you send back the responses. There's also file response, which I didn't demonstrate here. So that would uh, take file from document root, which we define in here. And uh, yeah, we'll just send it back. <laughs> so again, you just use request.file response and, you know, you need to construct a boost, uh, boost beast uh, file, uh, file body. Um, Okay, uh, now there's also logger. So this is my logger, and this is how you can implement logger writing into standard output. That's an example. I know I'm using streams, I'm not using formatting. No. Well, I'm used to use string streams. So here I define this magic uh, variadic um, formatting function that takes infinite amount of parameters and throw them one after another into a stream. That's just how I did it. So if you have 10 parameters, you just get separated with this magical thing using this recursive magic. Yeah, I like I like recursive magic. Right, so, um, so this is main. And we can see that we create uh, the security thing. Actually, the security one is defined in the E file because I just hard coded the certificate. So you can see it's just text. So your implementation would need to just load this from file. You can have it even text file, um, you know, it, it's, 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 it's encoded, right? Uh, you just, I think by 64. So you just store it somewhere in, I don't know, dot, dot SSH or somewhere and just load it if you want. This one is hard coded, but you can implement your own. You can use something else, you know. The bottom line is it has to have those methods, set key, dh, and I return that to, to the framework, right? Which is gonna, you know, initialize the TLS context with this. The secure config will do that for you. It will magically take those strings and do the magic with the context. Okay, so you don't have to worry about that. You just need to pass the strings in <laughs> from, from this guy. Um, additional parameters in the config are address, port, and thread counts. So, so that's obviously the binding address and port. And then you have thread counts, so number of threads we want to run our coroutines. So this is actually implemented using boost uh, coroutines. And uh, they can run on single thread or they can run on several threads. It's gonna be a thread pool. And uh, yeah, so we can then, you know, handle hundreds, thousands of requests and you can just use like five threads or so. <laughs> um, so these are my logger, the one I defined here. This is the server, the one that I defined just above, this one here. And the server, what it does is, first we check against our hard-coded authentication string. So that's again, something that you would need to implement on your, so on, on your own, uh, like the, you know, authorization needs to go usually to DB or already, so wherever. And then, um, and yeah, and then I do like a routing. The routing here is very, very simple. So you just get method. And if it's get, you do something. If it's post, you do something and so on. You can also take the target. So this is the path after the schema, right? So this is your path. It includes uh, the query string as well. So it's the full full string. And you can do some routing based on that using typical uh, if statements. And you can parse it yourself if you want. In new boost, uh, 81, 81 or two, uh, the author of the boost beast has created the URI library, which I cannot use here because this is 174. Because it's all in Docker, I deliver these solutions in Docker, and this image here that I have, um, it says Ubuntu latest, but it gives me this is Boost one seventy four, so that's Ubuntu the Ubuntu issue <laughs> doesn't have the latest. 
and I'm not I'm not willing to build boost myself. It's too much uh, too much pain. <laughs> so so yeah. Um, maybe in some future I'll add. I don't know. Maybe maybe we'll just wait until one eighty one uh, in Ubuntu. Now, um, yeah. So so yeah, we have uh, we have this service. So that's my class here. This magic wrapper about the around the boost beast and uh, it takes your logger class it takes this server class we defined but it also takes this this is request factory so it it tells it tells the uh, the service what type of requests do we create so dynamic requests are again for you know if we want to support files and then you have um string requests if you want to support just short requests maybe JSON. Again, this doesn't support any JSON. You need to have your own library to, to process JSON. So essentially, uh, you get request arrow body, and from that you can you can uh, you can take uh, you know the, the JSON or whatever you want to take. Uh, this this is a loop where I'm uh, reading from a chunked uh, body. Chunked body is what you get when you use a dynamic request. So it means that uh, the body has arrived in pieces as opposed to just one big string, you know? What is the architecture of this uh, of this mini framework? This is ultra mini framework, but it wraps a lot of code in the example. So let's look at the, the concepts. So we have concepts here. This is our SSL certificate loader concept. So this is a concept of a class that you are going to implement as your, you know, my, um, let's go back, uh, this is my security, right? So this is this is my implementation, my example, hard-coded implementation of this, of this concept here, which says there needs to be some load that will do the magic to load the file. And then these are just observers. So there must be some variables inside this class that will give you those, those values. And then there's a get passport, which is called in some Lambda later on. Next thing is um, service config concept. So service config concept is, um, is just a concept of one of the classes that I implemented here to configure um, the SSL context. So this is what you provide. Right, so you create a class that implements this concept, and I have implemented a class that um, you know implements this concept, and this class will take your thing and will interact with it. So there is interaction between the two classes implementing these two concepts. So this is logger concept. Um, as you remember, we implemented this my logger, so it needs to have info and error, right, and at least one string should be, it should be able to accept at least one string, although it won't be enough because the logging there requires a little bit more. Uh, so like two or three strings. It doesn't need to be string. It can be any value as we've seen um, in the implementation here. So it's actually auto. So int is a good as well. Um, let's go back to concepts. So we have request concept. So that is the concept of something that you're going to handle. And this is a concept of a thing that will go in. Let's go back to your server. So this is your server. And here, here this request goes in. And this is this request concept that this request has too much. Now let's look at that concept. So, um, so this request concept has defines like underlying types. So this is boost beast uh, request type, and this boost beast um, buffer type. Actually, it's an ASIO, boost ASIO buffer type. And then we have here um, methods to create responses. And uh, I organize this concept in such a way that I'm just saying this method will create a bad request response. But what do I do with this response? I should be able to put it into send. So whatever is the type that this produces has to match the type of what this accepts. Basically, what is what I'm saying. This way, I don't have to write uh, some complicated concepts. I can make, keep the concept to the minimum, say, oh, that's my concept. <laughs> that's it. And that's how we actually use it. So, you know, it's actually more or less 
kind of like a test case of the class. So you have your class T here and it just says, okay, does this work for this class? This should work for this class, right? So it's like a test case, like a unit test. So we also have this request. It's simply delegates into the underlying um, request type. We also have the arrow operator and star operators. So this is a delegating operator and this is deferencing operator. They both go into request type, underlying the request type and the bracket operator that that also should should get and should call the bracket uh, operator on the underlying type. So that's just a short shorthand. These are shorthand so that you can so you can write something like this request arrow target instead of request dot request dot target. <laughs> right. So this is much much simpler. Okay, let's go back uh, to concept. We also have request factory concept. You may wonder what is the story with this factory? Why is it like, how is it even a factory if there is no, no functions in here? Uh, yeah, so this whole you know design is compile time design. So this factory is a compile time factory. It means that we don't call a function, right? So we have a request template defined inside of the factory. And we just specialize it with this type file. So this is how we, we, we produce a type. So this request factory concept is capable of producing a type of request by passing in the logger type. So we know that the L has too much logger concept, right? So we know that the L is a logger type, right? Now, server concept um, has to have an operator that accepts a request type. So we know that the R is going to be matching request concept. So this way, you know, this server concept is something you implement. Um, this is my server and this is this operator. So this operator matches this concept here. This one, right? Because this R is a request concept. And if you look back, we require it to be request concept. Let's maybe look at the service itself, or maybe request first. Let's look at the request factory. So this is the request.http. And um, yeah, this is the request factory. And you can see that the request factory actually is a struct that is quite empty. There's nothing in it. The only thing that is in it is this inside struct, right? So what happened here is that I just created a struct with struct inside, I'm kind of like it's called also quoting. Um, because, um, well, I could make a, I could make request a template with two parameters, but then the problem would be this. You see this string request and dynamic request, right? Because I would like this, you see, if we go back to main, um, I would like to pass it like this. I already passed here my logger to my to the service, right? So I, I specialize this service with my logger type, but then I don't want to say again that this dynamic, I want dynamic request with my logger. I don't want to say that, right? Because if I were to make this a template alias, right? So if I were to make this, this request here have two parameters, request type and logger concept, if I were to do that, then this would have to be template alias. And if this was a template alias, you know, I would have to pass the template parameter. So I would have to pass it here, dynamic request and, uh, you know, something and my logger again. And I would not like to do that because here is my logger and then my logger again. So the second option is that I change the service to be second order template. So this way, uh, instead of, you know, this request factory here, and I would have, I would have request, you know, which would be template and not, you know, not like this. But the problem with second order template is that you see, this is, this is a concept. I cannot have second order template concepts. They don't exist. <laughs> I wish I could have a second order template concepts, but they don't exist. We already said that in the other video, we don't have second order template concepts. And because we don't have second order template concepts, in C++ 98, we didn't have second order templates in Visual Studio. And what did we do? We did exactly the same thing. The same workaround, you know? So we are 
20 years later and we're doing the same workaround because of the same problem is just now it's the problem is with concepts and not templates <laughs> that's um that's magic isn't it the situation just sort of likes to repeat itself so you can see this is the this is how we work around it in all times this is how we worked around uh you know the lack of second order templates so you just create a struct inside of a struct and this way you know you pass this template parameter but you can still pass this later and you don't need to specialize everything at once but um yeah for concepts for them to work as you have seen i i, I won't be able to use now make this second order well not this second order template but make this template of two parameters and then and then here in the service uh make it a second order template and then what happened with the concept it's the problem i don't have a concept for that so from from now on because we do have concepts my code will contain exclusively concepts the you know the template type name is a thing of the past it will never exist again in my code <laughs> i mean it does exist it does exist here you can see that uh, i didn't define a request type concept i should have to be honest I should have defined some concept for this because this is this is not nice, you know. And actually, if you look here, I almost defined it. I said there are going to be method and target, so that could have been actually, uh, you know, I could put here um, beast request concept, boost beast request concept, something like this, you know. Maybe boost beast should provide concepts.hvp so that I can use them. So, so we stand on this. We have this um, we have this fa request factor and request. But you you know what this is? This is like a multiple parameter list in Scala as well, right? So you can you can query. So you see, this could be a template. This could be just a, without this, right? Request could be a template with two parameters, request type and local concept, and then you can query it by just you know passing this and not passing this, you know. So this is, you know, the magic to query, <laughs> to query the request type, kind of, I don't know. Um, yeah, and here we have a logger. So yeah, so this is kind of kind of interesting. So what, what happens here, um, how this wrapper works, right? So how this wrapper works. Let, let's go back to example for a moment and see, uh, for that, I'd actually need to go back to the main page. And there is a link here. So this is an example by uh, author of the Boost Beast, we need Falco. And um, yeah, in this example, we see there is a main. We initialize this as a context here from Willow certificate. This is from another input. And then we spawn some uh, async IO, Boost ASIO, um, you know, fibers. <laughs> Um, yeah, so so they will they will uh, process um, they will process the tasks right. So we just spawn this do list and um, you know callbacks which are above, and they and they will be accepting. Um, see, they will be accepting. Where is it? Finding listening here, listening, and then we have accept socket. Oh, here we go. And then we spawn again, right? So, so we just keep listening um, on 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 this socket, right? Asynchronously using this yield context. And then once we once we accept, uh, you know, the connection, we spawn again into into do session, right? And uh, then we see that we spawn number of threads to handle all those, um, you know routines so here we have uh, the thread constructor called it's actually calling um this um io context run right so this will this will run the, the async asynchronous asynchronous events loop event loop right so we have this event loop and uh, we create a number of threads each of them runs this loop so yeah, so we do have session here, 
and that gets called as we've seen uh, once we accept the, the connection on the socket. Uh, we do the handshake on SSL somewhere here. Oh, here we go, SSL handshake. And then we're happy on this connection. So we're gonna be processing the packet. Um, yeah, so here we have this handle request and that's another function above. But what is important here is to stop for a moment. So until this do session, uh, we were handling the connection and reading from, from socket, right? So this is like a, before we even get to the point that we want to handle the uh, HTTP request. And now we, we parsed it somewhere here. Um, or here, I think we read asynchronously into a buffer. And um, we read it into this request here. So my guess is that we'll parse it. I, I don't know if it will parse it straight away or lazily afterwards. But um, here we have uh, here we have a call to handle request. Now, let's go to this handle request call. And now we can see that handle request call is a code that looks like this. Uh, there is number of lambdas to create the responses for the uh, request. And then those are used later on with a send function. You know, there is also send with those uh, bad requests somewhere. Oh, here we go, bad request. So you can see we, we call send with those lambdas. We also call send with those requests created here, like for example, this one here. So this send came to us from template parameter from here. Right, so this is some type <laughs> of a functor and it's defined somewhere here. Here we got the send lambda and it does the serialization and writes to, to the stream asynchronously. So we yield the context, right? So it sounds like there is some logical flow here, but uh, it's all like uh, co code, 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 and we would like it to be something simple. So let's go back to the code. So our code looks like this. This is where we start our journey in our main. We say service, service config, and that basically configures everything and launches the service and threads run and we're happy. So, so this is actually run, you know, service apply config will run the service using the code. Now, um, the server, the server is the functor, functor-like object that you define, and it will receive this request, you know, which is well request concept, but it is, uh, but it is going to be uh, the instance of this class in this case. So this class, as you can see, I have wrapped into this class those lambdas, and I just made them normal functions, normal methods inside this request. And the reason they were lambdas is because they have been capturing some context. So I captured this context inside this class here. So if you look at the member variables, um, I have captured all the context, have captured all, all that was needed to uh, construct those um, lambdas, which are now just methods, and also to send, so to serialize back. So you can see the send is somewhere here as well. Um, oh, here is the send too. So you can see the serializer and write it here too. So I wrapped it nicely in this request class, right? And uh, what happens next is you receive this instance of this request class, you receive that, and then you can call those methods on that thing. So you don't have to do those lambdas anymore. Your code doesn't have to do that. Your code simply uh, receives that request object here. And uh, you can just play with it, right? So you can say uh, request send, request bad request. And you can get a method and do something to the body and so on. So you have access to that in the request. Okay, so one more thing. Um, as I said earlier, there is um, two supported types of body for the request, a string body and dynamic body. So dynamic body is when we receive a bigger um, 
requests that are get chunked into chunks. Um, string body is for requests that are maybe shorter and we just see them as a whole thing, as a string, right? And then um, how do we how do we handle those? Besides, you know, besides having a request factory that can make those requests of this type, um, we also need to know what is the the buffer that we're gonna be allocating, you know, the buffer type that we're gonna be allocating for uh, async grids in in the server, the service. So we have this buffer type trait. And I use the, this std conditional and the same. So um, I'm getting used to those, you know, standard library new things. Yeah, they're pretty cool. I don't know if I like them so much. Previously, I had the version that had the specialization of this guy for two different uh, types of the um, data, but I think this is this is okay. This is like. Uh, there's only two versions. This one is for this case where the request type is this. Otherwise, we use this one. If we had more choices, I would be biased to use template specialization because this conditional will be like conditional inside of conditional inside of conditional. <laughs> maybe I don't want to do that. I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe if it was some kind of, no, I don't know. Maybe a tree <laughs> with multiple levels. All right, so that's the request. Now let's look at the service. So the service is a thing that runs a server, your server, right? So this is the service class. It takes these three template parameters, um, a logger type, a request factory, and your server. This is yours, the logger, and the server is yours. The request factory is, go back, uh, one of those two at the end string or dynamic requests, okay? So we go back to the service. And now from the request factory, we need to get out the request. We need to tell the request factory, create me a type of request inside of a template parameter list because I need to pass it to server concept. It's just insane, isn't it? I have this template parameter request factory and I'm using it, striding this template parameter list in the concept as a parameter of a concept. How cool is that? It's not second order concepts, but it's still cool. It's pretty cool. And I like, I like that I can write this type name thing here. Compiler didn't complain about it, so. I'm happy. So it's all conceptualized. It's all protected by compiler. You are not allowed to pass here anything that will not work in theory. In practice, you know, you may implement those concepts, but there might be something that's, you know, not exactly expressed in concepts the way it should be. And um, things will still not work. But at least you're you're consciously passing something that was supposed to implement the concept. Now the service um, takes a logger and your server. Basically, it takes the two things from you. You need to define how you handle requests, and you need to define what you do with the log messages. Okay, so I'm not gonna be telling you what to do with log messages. You need to you need to figure out what you're gonna do with log messages, and you need to figure out how you handle requests. I only wrap around Boost Beast to handle the connection, the SSL, and to parse the HTTP messages. And then the rest is yours. Um, so, so yeah, this is our operator. And this is how, you know, it's operator of running the service, you know. So we, we call this operator in main. Let's look here. We call this operator here service config. Right, so we go back. So we have this operator and um, we do the magic that was in the example. So we define the context, right? We uh, create the SSL context as well. So this is the IO, this is the SSL. 
then we spawn on this IO context the uh, do connection somewhere, do do listen, right? And uh, and yeah, and then we create those threads. So literally copy paste from the example. And then we have this do listen again, copy paste from the example. I was kind of lazy. <laughs> and uh, we do this. Now, there is one interesting thing I found that if you don't do that, um, the code will compile and it will crash. <laughs> so, so yeah, you see, I have used Lambda here. I have captured those variables and I have used this Lambda and that is working correctly. But here I had to use bind because if I define Lambda, the way things get captured and so on, unfortunately, this stream here will cause a crash. You know, I don't really, I couldn't find a way of expressing this as a lambda. Bind is a is a function call, a normal function call. So it, it takes this here as a parameter, and uh, yeah, it will it will take this value here and store it in the bound. You know, lambda. Well, boost lambda. <laughs> um, so, so yeah. And in here, um, theoretically, we're doing the same thing. But yeah, I think the problem is, I think the problem is that I, I don't know. Can I actually say that ex what that we capture? We need to say in here in this capture list. I would need to construct it in this capture list. I think. Not sure how to do that. Yeah, because that, that that gets that's you see in bind the parameters of bind. This is what you put. This is a, your this is your capture list. The placeholders underscore one is uh, is this guy. It's a parameter, but those guys, those captured ones, these are everything that is not placeholder. All of those, all of this, these are not placeholder. So these are captured. And this one is an argument, so so I'd I'd have to capture this somehow. So I'd have to write this 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 thing, this constructor. I think I would have to write here in a in a capture list if I were to. I don't know. I have no idea how else could we do it. It sounds like boost bind is the only way here to achieve the goal, or the simplest way of achieving the goal. It works this way. <laughs> <laughs> now we call the do session. Do session does the thing, the same thing as it did on the example. Uh, the only difference would be that I'm using the buffer type from the request type, and we remember that the buffer type was deducted using my um, buffer type trait. And then what were we? Then 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 then. And then we have this follow up that, um, yeah, we'll just read asynchronously into that buffer type. And then we'll parse using this request type, right? And eventually I'm going to call a uh, server, uh, you know. Oh, right. So here we're going to have, uh, so here we have this. Uh, I've lost my point. <laughs> so here we're going to parse, you know, into this request, this request type here, the buffer, right? So we're going to read the, the, the this SSL stream into this buffer and going to parse into this request. And then we will create this, this mini framework versions of, of requests, right? So we created this, um, this request. We create that from, from that parse request. Yeah, so we, we create this request type from that request. I, I move it there. I don't need more than one copy, so I just move it there. Um, and I give it a reference to the logger. 
and then we call server request. So this is this is this line is exactly the teleport into your code, um, and it goes here to your operator, and this is where you handle that thing. So, so this is where it ends, and you know, this is how it works. Um, and at the end, we repeat if there is more packets to read. Probably close connection and repeat for the next connection. So basically this, well, I'm not bad today, but the code I wrote might be bad today. It's a code bad time. <laughs> um, I hope so. So yeah, here you go. You're free to use it in whichever way you like. Uh, let me know if you like it. Uh, don't hesitate to, I don't know, comment or something. <laughs> Contact me in some ways. Um, yeah, the project uh, is here on this list. At the very end, I added it. And now the project is officially part of the project that use this. There's lots of other projects, so maybe you know this one isn't the most suitable for your needs and you want to use one of the other ones. However, if you want to write something super simple that requires not too much thinking and you literally want to you know, respond to get, get requests and there's only one get request or maybe two, or maybe you want to upload a file, there's no, no simpler way than using this. You, you cannot do it simpler than this. <laughs> If you want to upload a file, all you need to do, you know, if you want a service that uploads a file, here you have it ready to go. You see, you just say, take this code as is, and in here you just need to write into some file, you know. So this uh, this body, you know, move dot data needs to go into your file. That's it. Um, if you want to download a file, you can do that as well. And you don't need to change anything besides the fact that you need to use this um, response type. Oh, here we go. File response. This is what you need to use. Request.file response. And this is a file body. So this is a alias to file body. So file body is boost beast HTTP file body. And you create it by, by constructing it, and then you call open with your file name. And that's it. And you serve it back to the user. So send file response file body, and file body can be constructed with, you know, then with file name when you call open. Right. So, so yeah. So so um, this is how how simple this is. What else can you use it for? Um, so if you want a JSON support or do the routing or I don't know, some other things, I'm sure there is libraries on GitHub here that you can use for that. I'm sure if I put, put JSON here, owner, I want to search for JSON hold a hold GitHub. Oh, look at that. There is there's a JSON here. Lots of JSON. So I can just use some of those, I suppose. So yeah, I think uh, the good thing here is that this is all packaged as a Docker container. So should work on your machine straight away. You don't need to do anything. You just need to follow these steps. And I really hope that it does work when you change those comments. However, you probably want to build things manually uh, because you're going to be adding new things. And uh, yeah. You have this Docker container, so everything is set up for you. You know, if you look here, um, I already set everything up, installed everything, so you need to not worry. <laughs> Let's do some demo. No, demo, demo time. So this is my this is my code, VS Code. We see that I have everything here now. Let me try to make this. I think it's made already. Okay. Let's run it. Okay. And now let's do first request. 
Let me show you what task you got doing. Oh, this is a cool thing, right? And you can see the password here is admin, password one, two, three. I'll show you what happened in the server. Oh, you can see that here is, uh, I printed out the, the thing that cool has sent. And what I did was I copied this and I pasted it into my authenticate user. I just pasted it here, straight from the terminal. <laughs> Well, you can implement it using some more sophisticated uh, libraries. Um, yeah, we can also do post now. Well, let's see what happened. Um, you see that the file was sent in three chunks, right? Um, the body size is 12.6, and it was successfully received. We didn't save it anywhere. We just received it. We just made it disappear in thin air, but yeah, we received it and that's it. Uh, what else do we handle here? We also handle something. Uh, we have this uh, other request. So if I go, um, if I try, let's, let's say I do delete. And now it says invalid request. It says invalid request because it hits this line. So I handle get, post, and otherwise it's an invite request unless there is some custom header. So let's add a custom header and put path in it. Why would that be the case? Okay, now it passed. So uh, I tell you what happened. This is the shell script, you know? I pass it like this. So when I put it in quotes, it was bash processing those quotes and it put a space. <laughs> All right. Oh, well, everyone makes mistakes. Yeah, so uh, if, if you like this library, um, you know, please use it. Um, comment, subscribe, like, you know, and see you again in the, another video.